on the back of the car I created the water outlet and uh, here's a funny fact this is actually made out of a Hi, I'm Eric and this is my Land Rover Defender Expedition Camper not so long ago I set off to discover the world and ended up in Iraq where I spent four months in lockdown due to the pandemic after which I returned home and now after months of waiting it's time to restart the world trip but first I have to prepare the car for a journey of a lifetime so welcome to have fun and go So yeah, I have some awesome news because after much deliberation I have decided to restart the world trip and my plan is to leave in a couple of months. Why in a couple of months might you ask? Well, there are a few things I have to check and repair before I can even move the big old Defender out of the garage. For example, the drivetrain, the front and rear axle casing, the fuel system, the cooling system, and probably a couple of other things I might stumble upon while working on Sally G. That's the name of the car. I'm also going to make some changes to the car's interior, but more on that in a second. Okay, so not so long ago I started working on the front axle. I didn't film it because my initial plan was to do just a basic and simple check. So I removed the tires, inspected the brake discs, but then I got curious and continued with the hub, stub axle, uh, swivel pin housing and well, basically everything else. Um, however. I did film how I removed the front axle from underneath the Defender, which was a bit time consuming but not that hard. And now it's more accessible and pretty easy to clean, check and apply a fresh coat of paint. Alright, I know the introduction is pretty short but I just wanted to get you up to speed on what I am up to. And all I can say is that I'm really excited and I can't wait to prepare the Defender for the world trip. So, first the front axle. All right, um moment of truth um That's it. <laughs> oh, heavy mother So, um, now that I have removed the big and heavy differential, it's time to clean this chunk of metal. Mm. So this, this is taking me more time 
than I had expected. Um, my plan was to finish this project in one day. Well, <laughs> that's not going to happen, which is not a problem because I'm really happy with the results so far. And I know why it's taking me more time because my plan was only to remove the paint where rust was visible, but it ended up in a cleaning frenzy. Oh well, um, I'm going to call it a day because it's uh, pretty late and finish this tomorrow. Good morning. Um, hopefully today I'll finish cleaning the front axle, but uh, I guess it's a good idea to first get rid of the gunk I already removed. <laughs> Okay, that's it for the <laughs> for the front axle. Pretty happy with the results so far, um, but I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do next as to for the cleaning it and which paint am I going to use because if I leave it like this, I can use hammerite paint. But what's the right word? I'm not really happy with using hammerite. I'd rather use a 2K epoxy paint. So first use a 2K epoxy primer and then a 2K paint. But if I do, I have to clean the whole axle like to the bare metal uh, and then I can spray paint it, which is going to take a lot of time and is going to be more expensive. So um, I don't know what I'm going to do. So in the meantime, I'm going to work on the interior. But first, let me show you the old, yes, old, by old, I mean, I'm drastically going to change it for the next three trip. But uh, before I do, let me give you a little room tour. Okay, there's probably going to be a little discussion in the comments down below about my hammerite remark, but I've used hammerite on this front axle about two years ago and uh, on some places the paint did a good job but on most places the rust made a uh, a strong comeback so that's why i'm hesitant to using hammerite again now you know okay room tour <laughs> In preparation for the first world trip, I did a lot of research on camper builds and camper interior because I have absolutely zero experience with that. And uh, the more pictures I saw on Instagram and videos on YouTube, I noticed that one was even fancier than the other. Um, but I was looking for a functional, affordable and lockable storage system I could build myself. So I came up with this idea. As you can see, there are six boxes. They're each 18 liters. And beneath there are three large boxes and they're each 35 liters, which is more than enough. And these are heavy duty storage boxes. And I use transparent ones because it's really easy to locate stuff. To prevent these boxes from moving around while driving, I used a metal pipe and uh, it will also stop thieves from uh, grabbing all my stuff. See? I actually used a rim lock, which is generally used for locking windows, but it does an excellent job keeping these boxes in place. The lock is bolted firmly to a metal plate on the back so that it can withstand an attack.
there are two lockable compartments underneath the storage boxes to store all the heavy stuff like spare parts and tools. I use this wooden panel as part of the bat. You take it out like so. You place it right over here. And uh, I use these bench cushions as part of the mattress. And then you have yourself a little bed inside the car, which looks like this. Now, I only sleep inside the Defender when the weather is really terrible. I usually sleep on top of the car inside the rooftop tent. To give you a rough idea about the total cost of the interior build, this is what I've paid for everything. The nine heavy duty storage boxes are 125 euros. These three rim locks are 60 euros. All the pipes, sheet metal and aluminum L profiles are 75 euros. I used four plywood panels for the interior build. Some I painted black and in total I paid 220 euros. The ceiling was pretty expensive. I used 27 wooden slats worth 500 euros. No, I'm joking. It was 175 euros. The custom made bench cushions are 130 euros. The little carpet, 7 euros. And the locks for the storage compartments are 12 euros. I spent around 60 euros on wood glue, screws, bolts and other fasteners. So, the total costs of the interior build are 864 euros. Now, to be clear, this is what I paid for the interior build. The costs for the equipment are not included, but everything is in the description down below. All right, the refrigerator. This is the Dometic Cool Freeze CFX40W. Um, I will put all the information in the description down below if you're interested. This is a compressor cooler and it has 38 liters of storage volume, which is a lot. As for the electrical system, I have two 12 volt, 95 amp hours house batteries. They're being charged via a 80 watt solar power panel I have installed on the storage box, which I carry around on top of the roof rack. I use a Victron Energy Solar Charge Controller, which gathers energy from the solar panels and stores it in the batteries. I also have a module which charges the house batteries while driving via the car's alternator. It's a simple device. The module will automatically start with charging the house batteries once the car's starting battery is full. I also have a 100 watt portable solar power panel in case of emergency, but I only used it three or four times. So the 80 watt solar power panel on top of the roof and the charging module are enough for charging both house batteries. So I can charge my phone, tablet and my laptop via a 300 watt converter. On the back of the car, I created the water outlet and uh, Here's a funny fact. This is actually made out of an old tissue box holder. <laughs> I replaced the original plastic back door cover with a self-built wooden panel so it could hold the uh, trusty Coleman stove. And uh, I also made a little table and uh, it only cost me eight euros. Behind the passenger seat is the water system installed. I have a 10 inch Aqualogic water filter, a self priming automatic electric pump from Marco and a massive 103 liter water tank. The pump and gauge have their own on off switches and for safety I can permanently close off the water supply. Now I have a heat exchanger for warm water which I installed underneath the bonnet. So the way this thing works is pretty simple. I connected the heat exchanger to the car's cooling system. Inside the exchanger are two separate layers. Coolant flows through one layer, water from the water tank flows through the other. And because coolant is about 85 to 90 degrees, this thing gets pretty hot and thus heats the cold water. So, cold water goes in, hot water comes out. 
why am I going to change everything? Well, the only way to find out if something works or not is by, you know, using it. And uh, so I did for one year during the world trip. And although I really like the, the idea behind the uh, interior design, there are a couple of things I dislike. So I thought about keeping some elements, but in the end, it's much easier to just get rid of everything and start all over. That's just the way it is. For example, the refrigerator. Um, I really like it. I'm not going to buy a smaller one, but every time I open the lid, you see, and that's pretty annoying. So I am going to change this. All right, the bench. <laughs> well, it's a bit too short. So when you sit like this, after a while, your butt really starts to hurt. And uh, I do admit, it's a design flaw. My bad. Uh, but uh, I am going to change it into a bigger lounge space. Note to self, create a bigger lounge space. Note it. <laughs> All right, so to create more room, the storage boxes have to go. I know it's sad because I really like the whole idea. It's well organized, they're easy to take out and uh, carry around, but they take up too much space, so they have to go. Okay, in next week's video, I will start with the new interior build. For now, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. It would mean a lot to me.